Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to day 7 of Teaser Season for patch 3.22 and the Trials of the Ancestors expansion. Today we got a divination card and that is it, but it is a big piece of news because this is the sort of thing that while simple, can have a very big impact on the farming meta of an entire league. Now that's going to depend upon where exactly it drops, but if it is a zone specific drop, as was the case with the 3.21 card Brother's Gift, then this is going to have a big impact on the maps that people are running all league. So the Fortunate is a set of 12 which turns in for two Divine Orbs. In short, it is 1 30th as good as Brother's Gift, and based on the way that grinding your games have done divination cards like this in the past, where there's a number of things that give similar awards, it is likely to be 30 times as common as Brother's Gift. Brother's Gift is a very rare card. To give you a bit of a sense as to how rare I expect the Fortunate to be, I expect this card to be three times as rare as the Porcupine, a card that many people watching this have probably farmed for themselves, to be eight times as rare as the Chains That Bind, and about 100 times more rare than the most common divination card in the game, which is Reign of Chaos. All of this is based upon extrapolating from research that's been done in the past by Poor Fishwife. I'll put a link down in the description below to her major write-up on how divination card weightings were all determined, and also to a spreadsheet of divination card rarities for 3.20. There isn't an equivalent sheet for patch 3.21, not much change between 3.20 and 3.21, except for cards related to Chayula items specifically, they got made much rarer, and additionally Brother's Gift was added, probably at a drop weight of around 40, 50 or 60. I suspect the fortunate will be about 1,250. So why does this matter? I compiled a tier list of divination cards that takes into account their value in Trade League and their rarity. Now day one is a bit different. Day one, a whole bunch of cards that you wouldn't care about later in the league. Things like the Chains That Bind, the Dapper Prodigy, these can be worth target farming on day one, but they're generally not worth anything much later in the league. However, if you're someone that doesn't complete the Atlas until week two, you're not really going to be in a situation where you can target farm those cards where they're worth anything. And then you're going to want to pay attention to which divination cards are worth a lot later in the league. And really, the S tier for divination cards is just one card, the Apothecary. This is one of the rarest cards in the game with a drop weight that's believed to be about 7 or 8. But when you compare it even to other cards that people want, the Apothecary generally tends to be about 50 times as rare as those cards, but about 600 times the price. For a bit of a case in point here, I picked out three cards that are about 50 times as common as the Apothecary, but I cherry-picked ones that have more utility late in the league. Azarin's Reward, which grants you an Anima Stone, Abandoned Wealth, which grants you three Exalted Orbs, and the Enthusiast, which grants you a double Corrupted Victario's Influence. No matter when you are in the league, people want the rewards from these, but even then, these Divination cards tend to be nothing like 1 50th of the value of an Apothecary, despite being about 50 times as common. That is the thing that puts the Apothecary in a class of its own. Yes, it is very rare, but ask yourself, which would you prefer to have? Three copies of the Enthusiast, or three 2% chances to get an Apothecary? I think even those of you that are quite variance averse would generally prefer to have those three 2% chances at an Apothecary, because at least from a Trade League perspective, it's worth a lot more. However, there is an A tier of Divination cards that is a little bit below the Apothecary and that is Brother's Gift in 3.21. It is the only card that is holding a candle to the Apothecary in terms of farmability. And I believe that if Grinding Your Games decide to make this a zone-wide drop, then the Fortunate will probably be 30 times as common as Brother's Gift, and therefore will be just as good a farming choice. Which one you choose, Brother's Gift versus the Fortunate, will come down to your preference based on tile sets, and it will also come down to your personal preference when it comes to high variance outcomes. Are you someone that likes to get very, very rare, very, very big drops? Well, you'll chase Brother's Gift. If you're someone who prefers to get constant stream of smaller drops, then you're going to be chasing the Fortunate. Then there's the B tier cards, which are Clean Headhunter cards, Doctor, Nurse and Patient, and the two cards that give Mirror Shards, Seven Years Bad Luck and Unrequited Love. This B tier is likely to be unchanged in patch 3.22, but it's going to be supplanted by the new divination card, The Fortunate. That's why this is a big deal if it ends up being something that is a target farmable card. Now this card's impact on the mapping meta will be considerably less if Grinding Your Games have instead decided to give it to something that is not really target farmable. For example, they might have chosen to give this to map bosses again, kind of like the divination cards, the Sephiroth or Divine Beauty, which also give divine orbs, or they might have decided to give it to fairly unsustainable content. For example, if they were to put it in one of the unique heists or put it in some of the unique maps. The reason I don't think this is likely to be the case though, is that the artwork for this card screams Karui. If you don't believe me, have a look at the sun, have a look at the artwork of the sun, and I'll put a link down in the description below to a close-up so you can look at that much closer yourself. 
This is artwork that's been seen elsewhere in the game and is strongly tied to the Karui. This is also an expansion that has a lot of Karui themes as well. Based on this, my preliminary speculation, and this is just speculation, this does need to be tested in game, is that this might be tied to the map tag Karui underscore map. This is strand map, volcano map, shore map, estuary map, coves map, caldera map, and lava lake map. A number of those are quite good maps, but ultimately, this is only speculation at the moment. It's where I would first look for this card, but I'm not going to guarantee that you find it there. And one final piece of news that doesn't come from Grinding Gear Games. Patch 3.22's Atlas Passive Tree is not yet integrated into Path of Building. However, someone has come up with a workaround for this. I'm going to put a link to their Reddit post down in the description of this video below. Very important, read that post in its entirety before you use this temporary fix for Path of Building because it is not a complete fix. Nodes that do something that did not exist on the passive tree prior to 3.22 will not function at all. They're just a whole bunch of blank nodes. However, there are still some definite uses there, so if you're interested in playing around with Path of Building, one option is to wait until the official release of Path of Building for 3.22, or at least for the 3.22 player passive tree. But if you're determined to use it now and you're willing to put up with those limitations, then definitely feel free to follow the instructions in that Reddit thread. That's all I've got for today. May your divine orbs have fortunate results.